Hello. In this video, I'm going to cover analyzing a code snippet to find the big O runtime of an algorithm. First, some general tips and tricks. When looping over a set of elements, we consider the number of elements we're looping over to be represented by the variable n. These values of n could represent indices of an array, nodes in a linked list, the number of characters in a string, or any other representation of the problem size. Big O tells us the upper bound of the problem when run on large values of n. This means that an algorithm when run on any given value of n should never take longer or become larger than its big O bounded runtime. When looping through a set of n elements where n is the problem size, loops with addition or subtraction as incrementation are generally considered to be O of n. Loops with multiplication or division as incrementation are generally O of log n. Note that this is very simplified and does not cover all cases, but should be a good starting point when you're analyzing algorithms given to you, given to you in this class. Nested loops have their asymptotic complexities, or big O runtimes, multiplied together to get the overall big O of the entire algorithm. Sequential loops have their asymptotic complexities added together, then simplified to get the overall big O of the entire algorithm. First, let's look at a simple example. This is a fairly basic while loop. I've used a while loop because most of your examples have been for loops thus far, but loops all work basically the same way for purposes of determining big O. In this loop, our problem size is n, and we are looping from 0 and incrementing i by 1 on each loop. This algorithm will loop n times, leading to a clear big O of O of n. Now let's look at another simple example, this time involving nested, nested loops. The best way to figure out the big O of nested loops is to start by figuring out the big O of each loop individually. Then, following one of our tips and tricks, we multiply the big O's together to get the big O of the overall algorithm. So let's look at the outer loop. This is a basic loop over n with a simple incrementation by 1. We know from our previous example that this is O of n. The inner loop is a little bit different. This loop also loops over a problem size n, but it's incremented by 5 instead of 1. Does this change our big O? No. We might be tempted to say that the big O of this inner loop is O of n over 5, but we always drop constants when describing big O, so in this case we drop the constant of 1 over 5 and this loop is also simply O of n. Since these loops are nested, we multiply their complexities together to get an overall algorithm complexity of O of n times n, or O of n squared. This algorithm is slightly more complex, but if we break it down by each loop and remember our tips and tricks, we should be able to figure it out. The first loop is a simple O of n loop, as we've seen before. Next, we have a set of nested loops. The outer loop is yet another simple O of n loop. The inner loop is a little more complicated. If we remember our tips and tricks, when we see multiplication used to increment, this indicates logarithmic growth, as we see on the incrementation of the value k. The size of our problem is 2 times n, so we might want to say that the big O of the inner loop is O of 2 log n, but we drop constant, so the inner loop is O of log n. We remember that we multiply the complexities of the nested loops together, so that gives us a big O of the second half of the algorithm is O of n times log n. Now we have two sets of loops that are sequential, so we add their big O's together and simplify. n plus n times log n simplifies to just n times log n, giving this algorithm an overall big O of O of n times log n. Now a quick word on the big O of recursive functions. Because recursive functions call themselves, we end up with growth functions that are functions of themselves. This causes what is called a recurrence. An example of how to find the big O of an algorithm like this is given in the slides with a Tower of Hanoi problem through guessing, but we can also use something called the master theorem or master method. This gives us the runtime of an algorithm t of n, given a problem size of n, a number of subproblems a, the factor by which the subproblems are reduced in each recursive call b, and the growth function of the top level of the the recursion f of n. You will not be expected to know or understand this theorem for SER222, but it is an interesting thing to research. Thanks for watching, and if you have any further questions, please reach out on Slack or over email, and good luck in class!